So here's another design too. Now it's not on an actual roof rack, um, like a traditional roof rack, but we integrated a roof rack into the exoskeleton design. So this is our search and rescue, kind of our search and rescue 10 foot roof rack integrated into this exoskeleton design. Nice and tight here. I mean, we're talking like, I don't know, maybe, uh, Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. Appreciate you guys watching so much, thank you. Uh, we've got some cool stuff on today's vlog. Also, next week we have uh, the Daily Driven Exotics Hummer. We're gonna strip that thing down for paint so we'll have a full episode um, on the DDE truck. But on this episode, we're gonna be talking about roof racks as well as the evolution of roof racks. A lot has changed over the last 21 years of uh, Predator in business. Um, initially, we had uh, just some standard uh, rain gutter clamps on there. Um, it is not the best uh, mount for. Hold on. Good start to the vlog, Brian. Hello. The coverage was expiring, but we never heard back. Did you want to keep it? So, anyways, we're going to talk about the evolution of roof racks at Predator as well as the industry because the industry has changed over the years. Um, there's a lot of the industry that's still kind of stuck in the, like, set in the ways of the past. There's definitely better solutions out there. So uh, we are gonna start in on some of our roof racks. So this one in particular um, isn't our oldest design. I'll show you another version, uh, similar version, not the exact same one. Um, it's a little bit different with the rain gutter clamps and I'll talk to you about why that is not the best way to go. Uh, but this is our one of our original uh, low profile roof racks. So the design behind this is an actual radius footprint that mounts on the radius of the roof. And what that does is it distributes the load evenly on the truck. Um, this is our low profile design. So this is one of the first designs out there um, in the Hummer industry, as well as, and I know a couple other industries have picked up on it and they're uh, implementing a similar design, but having a much lower profile design where it sits a little bit lower like this. Um, in the past, when we first came out with it, there was a lot of conversations from customers saying, well, I don't like that design because it doesn't have the full hoop going all the way around, which is was at that time the traditional design. Um, my argument has always been, if you have uh, uh, like a basket style roof rack up here and you have an ice chest and that thing is not secured properly, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna fall off. So it doesn't really matter that you have this basket style roof rack with a full bar on there, in my opinion. Um, they do look cool, I like how they look, but function wise, um, you could argue either way, but ultimately you need to secure your load properly up there. Um, the cool thing about this is without the front bar and the rear bar, it gives you the ability to, or you know what, walk back here with me. It gives you the ability to like throw up lumber or a kayak up here, set it up here and just slide it forward. And by being able to slide that load forward, you can have a much longer load that's not just weighted on the uh, the actual rear bar and the front bar. So it's actually sitting on the actual, uh, been using actual quite a bit. <laughs> I think I'm stuck on that word today. So uh, yeah, that's why I really like this design. So this design, um, coming back over here on the clamps, was our initial design once we switched over to this style mount and it was one bolt on here, a smaller clamp, that has been fully upgraded and replaced. So I'll show you that in just a minute, but actually right behind me, take a look at this guy. So this is a traditional basket style roof rack with the rain gutter clamps right on here. Uh, very easy to work with. You can actually buy these clamps. Uh, I think a company called Confer makes some, and then you can build your roof rack and just bolt it on like that. The problem with it is the entire load is actually weighted on the radius or on the uh, the rain gutter itself, and so you have two panels here kind of um, uh, seamed together, and it's not the strongest point of the roof. This roof is actually a lot stronger up here, and you also have some uh, you have like your C pillar mount that sits right in this location. It's welded to the roof, which is extremely strong. 
You also have your B pillar mount right here and then obviously your A pillar up here. So we'll get into that too on the inside on another rack, but this is kind of a traditional roof rack. Um, they look cool, um, but I really don't like this style clamp. It does not, does not suit well for the Hummer. Now, maybe if you've got another truck um, and you don't have that option of actually resting on the radius of the roof, then this would probably work fine. But I've actually seen these guys folded over when there's actually there's see actually again it is ridiculous yeah this just looks I'm, scary to me though too yeah like well, well just imagine you put a heavy load on here it's gonna fold this thing down so we've seen that before yeah. we'll look around the, the the lot here maybe we have a truck that has that on there um but it's a cool design it looks good but there's better stuff out yeah, there it so. just seems the integrity of the weight load would just be so limited with it being yeah. on this rain gutter thing. I do have to mention though, this is a pretty cool rack because it is aluminum. And so it is a little bit lighter up here. You do have some heavy weight up there, but uh, with this design in particular, they did do a lot of mounts. Um, I have seen some where there's like four uh, mounts across here or three mounts. Um, that's just not enough on these trucks. Um, but uh, it is it is a you know probably one of the better basket style roof racks if uh if you have to go with the clamp mount but um i'll show you something better inside so come on inside let's look at this okay so we are on the hard top truck this is one of the latest designs it is our search and rescue roof rack what we've done here is it's very similar to the low profile design but we've actually radius this out actually again dude i don't <laughs> know why i keep saying it i'm not gonna say it anymore i'm working on it so we rotate this out a little bit and it gives you a bigger footprint. So with this angle back here, you can get a wider load up on top of the truck. Um, it also looks really cool with this angle. So it does angle up, back, and then back down, but it also angles out a little bit. It also gives us the ability to mount these lights in here. We can do this on the standard low profile roof rack too without an issue, but this is a pretty cool little spot here to mount a light if you wanna mount lights on here. But uh, really the coolest part of this rack is the foot, the, the mounting foot right here. So again, we're mounted like on this one. Take a look at this. We've got the A pillar right underneath here, strongest point in this region. You've got your B pillar mount right here, which is again, right at the strongest point of the roof. And then your C pillar mount right back here. And it's also on this uh, angle back here, which is giving a lot of integrity, a lot of support. So one of the strongest roof racks out there, full steel construction, and then aluminum slats up here to reduce the weight. So that's the majority of um, the material that's on these racks is the actual slats up here. So by going with aluminum, reduces the weight. We have a crossbar here, so you have a lot of integrity out of this rack. Also changed over to the double bolt mounts up here and a wider mount as well so instead of having the like the little two inch mount that we had before we have the four inch mount and then we also top it off with a predator logo engraved in here and we also have some caps the caps aren't on here right now but the caps do go on here um yeah it, it's a really cool rack you see oh here's another one over here so this is our 10 foot search and rescue roof rack and again four inch wide mounts uh here are the rubber mount the little caps that go on there as well gives it kind of a nice finished look to it and then we also offer it with aluminum just like the raw aluminum slats or the black slats um, my personal preference is the black slats it's a lot of material to powder coat i want to say it's like i don't know 300 bucks more or so to get them all powder coated we just transfer that over it's just uh extend the same cost for us to get these things powder coated to you guys. Um, but it, it looks really good all blacked out. But some people like the aluminum too. Um, it also does help out with a black truck in the desert. I've noticed because you've got a lot of material up there that's giving you um, a little separation from that heat. So this is absorbing the heat and then you have a little separation here which keeps it, the cab a little bit cooler. So here's another design too. Now it's not on an actual roof rack, um, like a traditional roof rack, but we integrated a roof rack into the exoskeleton design. So this is our search and rescue, kind of our search and rescue 10 foot roof rack integrated into this exoskeleton design. 
nice and tight here. I mean, we're talking like, I don't know, maybe a uh, uh, solid quarter inch or so off the body. It's really tight there. And then we have the, uh, the roof rack design mounted up here. Uh, we were able to mount lights off of the lower bar here as well as the roof rack bar up here, which is also part of that exoskeleton. Um, this one's a little bit different because the decking is all aluminum plates, like thick quarter inch aluminum plates that are bolted down. Um, and you'll see that pattern here. If you could, Jason, pop up there and show them what it looks like. So you can see that design has that uh, kind of a cross design um, triangulated across the whole entire roof rack. And then we have the aluminum plates that fill that in. So yeah, again, um, another kind of roof rack design integrated into the whole exoskeleton. Yeah, it's such a cool truck. Yeah, we're works. just waiting on interior right now from Roy. I mean, it's the problem is it's not like, oh, it's one week at the interior done. The interior alone that's going into this thing is taking probably six to eight weeks to do. And that's because we have to remold the full interior pieces. We can't just take the original panels and just throw some leather on there and call it good. Uh, it's actually fully remolded. So there's a lot of work that goes into this. So here shortly, as soon as I'm looking up at Roy right now, um, I'm kind of glaring at him right now, hoping that he's done soon. Where, where, where is that? He's, that? he's up there. Up there in the windows? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's his bird's nest up there. But uh, yeah, I was hoping that uh, we'd have it back by now. And I know it's just, it takes time to do it right. So as soon as it comes back, we'll get that in there. Um, new rims and tires are going on. We have the rims and tires, we're just not putting them on yet because there's no sense to. That'll probably be one of the last items. No reason to scratch them. Um, it definitely looks a little anemic right now because it has the stock offset rims um, as well as narrow tires, so uh, coming. All right, so we're in shipping and receiving and I grabbed a roof rack mount and this is actually our basket style roof rack mount. Very similar to the uh, search and rescue one. The only difference is we have two additional holes mounted in here where we slide in two stainless steel bolts, weld them in place on the inside and then fully weld the mount itself. So part of the expense on our roof rack is the sheer labor hours that go into this mount. This mount is just incredibly labor intensive. Even though we break bend a lot of these parts here, and this guy mounts them, uh, comes in through a slot on the backside, um, and it kind of assembles together. There's a lot of time that's spent in TIG welding this up, as well as sanding it smooth. And you can see that sharp edge on there. Um, you can just see that dedication to all those hours that went into this guy. So um, it adds to the cost, but again, you get something that uh, has a lot of value to it. Um, this is also the mount. Again, we have stainless steel bolts that are welded on here as well. So the advantage with that is they're not gonna rust out over time because you obviously can't powder coat the stainless steel bolts. Um, the disadvantage to it is you gotta be really careful when you're bolting this thing together. The roof racks do come with anti-seize. It's very important that you use that anti-seize on here when you're assembling it um, because it will bind up and snap off the actual bolt here. So be really careful about that. And we also have the Predator logo engraved in there. Um, oh, we also have um, a rubber pad that goes underneath there to protect the roof of the truck. So this guy mounts right there. So yeah, nice little, nice little mount. Um, again, ton of hours that go into this thing unfortunately, but uh, we chose to do it right as opposed to just, you know, fabbing up some quick, easy mounts. That, what machinery uh, do we use on this stuff that you're talking about? Um, you actually, yeah. Breaker or whatever? Yeah, and... if you want to, let's go in the back. Yeah. I'll show you. 
Uh, so we're gonna go to the fab department now. So uh, we use uh, actually a number of different machines to build our roof racks. We have one of them, like for our roof rack feet, we use a CNC plasma cutter. It's a high definition plasma. So you get really nice defined edges. You can see this is, this is actually a roof rack mount. It's a, a visor that goes onto a printer van. We do a couple other um, roof racks out there but this one you can see how precise all these uh, cuts are on it and that's from that high definition plasma so come on out here you can take a look at it what's up Ali? what's going on so over here we've got our thermodynamics high def plasma the plasma machines if you guys have seen plasma machines they're usually like little boxes like this big that machine is massive. Um, you know what, let's go take a look at it really quick. So this is a high definition plasma. Um, you have like standard plasma. Um, cut quality is pretty good. This is just way above and beyond. However, we do have to run gas, so we have a number of different shielding gases to operate it. We also have a water injection system on this, depending on what materials we're cutting, the thickness, as well as the definition that we want to have out of it. So this thing's just phenomenal. It cuts out all of our roof rack feet, um, gives us all of our mounts that we need, and then we can assemble it with a TIG welder over there. Um, we also use our big brake. Um, shoot, I forget the tonnage. I think it's like a 120 ton okay. press brake. They're over here. Sorry. So we got a American made Bailey um, industrial press brake. This thing's massive. You know what we should do is we should film next time we're doing our belly pants. That's pretty cool because that thing's so massive and heavy. We throw it on here, press brake. It takes a couple guys to actually manipulate it. But uh, CNC press brake and uh, does all, pretty much all of our parts. You can see over here, these are some mount, or these are pieces, thick quarter inch plate that go into our Viper front winch bumper. Actually, Josh is making a Viper front winch bumper over here right now. But yeah, you can see this press brake right, or this brake right here. That's off of the machine. And then uh, something- gonna do that with his big muscles? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I'd be in the- Look, Next time Come on, yes. let me see those guns, Josh. Or let me see those guns. Lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> so on to the next piece of machinery for our roof racks. So this is a CNC plasma tubing notcher, and it oh. also etches on here exactly where the start of the bend is on everything that we produce. So this gives us precise pieces that come out of here, and they go fit right in the jig, we weld it together, that way we get every roof rack exactly the same size. And so this thing's gonna get processed through here, kicks out, and then it goes into our CNC uh, fender, and then we just punch in the numbers on it, hit a button, it bends to whatever degree that we call out for on the plants, and then they weld it up and it goes to powder coat, comes back, and we ship it out. Hey guys, I want to get a bit more content on the wagon that it was in one of the last episodes that Wilson filmed. He focused mostly on the roof rack, where I want to bring to attention a few of the key parts on this truck. Uh, the great truck here. Local guy, Will. Awesome. Good customer. Years and years. As you can tell, the roof rack is one of our first models, so clearly he's been working with us for, for a long time. But it's this front bumper. The search and rescue 12K bumper. Uh, integrated Warren winch. It's very simple design. I like the clean fit and finish of it. it uh, it's definitely an upgrade from the factory plate. and uh, it just, But it's not too much. You know, it's definitely a different budget to a different price point on it. So it's, it's a good fit for, uh, for the maybe a, a more of a tame build like this one. Not everyone goes the full extent of the exoskeleton, which we love to do because it pushes our envelope. But this is one thing I really like about this truck because it has... Uh, very clean lines to it, nothing really over the top. 
So another fact or another feature of this truck that I like is the step rear bumper. We don't sell many of these, but I think it's a good addition to the factory rear bumper. Gives you that good platform, uh, good solid base there. You know, you're going from a workable area of two inches out to eight or so inches. So you can stand up there, access that roof and uh, load up your gear, whatever it may be. Still has a clean lines to it. Again, it's not over the top. I think it just is a is a good looking part. Complements this whole uh, build that he put together with the uh, social rescue front bumper. Unique one-off front uh, brush guard that he asked for. The light bar that is then equipped with all the Baja design lights and that roof rack. Uh, this is the nine foot low profile that uh, Wilson mentioned before. And then that step rear bumper. Inside to control all these lights, he went with the uh, this style light switch, light setup. And uh, for life of me, I can't remember the brand. Uh, but I met with those guys out in, I think it's Switch Pros. I met with them out in SEMA. Um, good guys, work with those guys every now and then. Yeah, just a quick little rundown on this truck, going into a little bit more detail. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. Um, on the next episode, or possibly two, we're gonna feature the DDE truck. We're gonna fully strip this thing down, get it ready to, for paint. Um, unfortunately, and we were hoping that Damon and Dave would be able to come down here, but with this whole coronavirus thing, um, they are unable to get down here. So we're just going to film it, get it going, and get this whole ball rolling. So thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you soon.